So I started building this plane about two and a half years ago, and it was supposed to be the Solar Plane V4. Now it still might be, I'm not sure, but today we're gonna do some tests to find out if it's efficient enough. The idea here is that solar cells can be added to the top of the wing, and there won't be a need to cover them in any sort of covering film, because the edges can be nestled right up behind these KF airfoil steps. And that would improve efficiency of the solar cells, and they would produce more power. Now if you've never heard of a KF airfoil, the idea is that when you have a wing with steps on it like this, there will be little pockets of turbulence that form behind the step, and that kind of creates like a, a teardrop surface effect almost, and it's really not any less efficient than a normal shaped wing. These are used pretty frequently on RC models, and a lot of people claim they're even more efficient than normal wings and they have better stall characteristics. The whole thing is made out of 6mm Depron, and it's got a 5010 kV motor. It's the same motor that the Solar Plane V3 has. And it's got this big folding prop. And I machined this adapter that allows you to connect folding prop blades onto a multi-rotor motor. Each control surface just has two 9-gram servos. And then underneath the hatch here, it's got a magnet hatch. And in here, I've just got two batteries just to get the CG right. Um, if I do end up putting solar cells on this, I'll probably need to extend the nose out so that I can get the battery, a smaller battery, further forward. But right now, it's pretty tail heavy, so I had to add this extra battery in there just for weight. Before we get to the flight, I'd like to thank ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. ExpressVPN allows users worldwide to protect their privacy and security online with just a few clicks. More about them later. <laughs> flies, wow, flies pretty well. Wow, it's really graceful. Might be a little tail heavy still. This thing is super graceful. Look at that. <laughs> that prop is spinning so slowly. Wow, that's a cool noise. Wow. See if it'll do a loop-de-loop. -loop. No problem. It doesn't quite have as much control authority as I would like. Boy, fantastic. Okay, so that's just under half throttle and it's doing 2.9 amps. Now, it is true that it's gonna pull more current sitting here on the ground. Um, because the airflow is static, or the air speed is static, it's not moving. When the plane is moving through the air and there's air blowing past the prop, the current draw will be less. But sitting on the ground, it's 2.9 amps. And that is about what the solar plane V3 produces with its solar cells if it's just sitting there on the ground. Um, it can do up to 4 amps if the solar cells are facing directly into the sun. So this plane would be able to hold about 39 solar cells and my solar plane V3 can hold 44 solar cells. Now whether or not that 2.9 amp measurement is enough, it's really hard to say. Because once I put solar cells on this, it'll have a little bit more drag and it'll be quite a bit heavier. However, I'll also be able to ditch the big battery and go with a lighter one. Woo, there's a lot of factors. Well, I still don't know. So the next step is to put an autopilot on this and then get that tuned in. And then once that's flying well, put solar cells on it and see if the solar cells will be able to produce enough power to make this thing climb, which has been my goal of the solar plane project. It's a few weeks after that maiden flight that you just saw. And since then, I've extended the nose so that I don't have to put as much weight in the front to get the CG right. So now I have the battery mounted up here. It's quite a bit uglier, but hopefully it'll fly better. And also I've set up the RDU pilot flight controller system on a Pixhawk inside. I haven't flown it with the autopilot yet, so I'm about to do that and get it tuned in a bit. I've also got a current sensor on board, so that will tell us exactly how much power it needs to sustain level flight. Why is it flying so bad? It's also windy, so that doesn't help. Oh wow, I switched in the fly-by-wire A and now it's doing a bit better. That was a scary launch though, I think it's really tail heavy still. Yeah, it's barely flyable in manual mode. Uh, since the prop is so big, the motor torque has a lot of effect. Ooh. That was unintentional. <laughs> I was trying to land it in the grass over there, but it just pitched up right here. <laughs> it has some interesting flight characteristics. 
Okay, so now it's in return to home mode and it's just circling the home position. And it's very obvious that this plane is really bad at turning. It's probably partially in part because the CG is way far back. It's it's too tail heavy. But I wouldn't be surprised if it also had something to do with the weird vertical stabilizers on it. And probably the fact that there's a huge propeller and a lot of motor torque. I'll figure that out later, but for now it seems to be doing well enough. Let's go over here and take a look at Mission Planner. You can see that it's kind of struggling a little bit to hold a nice clean circle, but it's doing all right. So now I've got it doing a simple little waypoint mission that I set up. It definitely looks like it's kind of wandering quite a bit, having some trouble holding a straight course, but that just could be because of the wind. I'm not completely sure yet. It's also overshooting the corners quite a bit, but I think that's normal for planes. I have no idea what it's doing now. Oh, that's weird. Well, I think this just shows it needs more tuning or uh, physical adjustment to make it turn better, but either way, it is getting to the waypoints, so it is sort of working. So the average current draw is varying quite a bit depending on whether it's going into the wind or downwind, but it seems to be maybe on average around two amps, which is really good. Maybe even a little less than two amps, which is pretty amazing. So this thing seems to be like a really efficient plane, which is surprising due to the fat aspect ratio. So I've started a larger waypoint mission and it's pretty clear that it's not doing too well at holding its course. It's definitely wandering quite a bit, but it is still pretty windy, so. I went up even higher now and it's just creeping along into the wind, moving so slowly. It's getting like 40 minute flight times with a 2.6 amp hour four cell. So that's a good sign that we'll be able to get super long flight times with solar power. That is if the plane still flies when I add a bunch of solar cells on the wing. The plane just crashed. And this is not so good. What happened is I tried to go into a dive to lose altitude pretty quickly. It wasn't a super steep dive. It was still in uh, fly-by-wire A mode, so it was just whatever the min tilt angle was set to. So I think that was like 30 degrees. So I think it was like a 30 degree dive, but it just completely lost all control authority on the, I think the pitch and the roll axes. And then I couldn't pull up because I had no servo control. So then since I couldn't pull up, I tried pulling down and then it went down somewhere over here while I was pretty inverted. I'm hopeful that it's not too damaged because it hit the ground at a pretty shallow inverted angle. Where the F is that thing? The grass is literally taller than me, so, oh, there it is. It looks like I wasn't super lucky. It didn't hit one of these big clumps of grass, but there's uh, some slight signs of wrinkles in the foam there, but it looks pretty intact. Other than that, oh, the nose is a little damaged. Got a bit of a rip in the tail there, but that's an easy fix. Well, I'm gonna take this thing back to the shop and fix it up. In the next video you see of it, it very well may have solar cells on the top. We'll see. Attaching the solar cells to the foam turned out to be quite a challenge. I didn't want to glue them on because this would make it impossible to reuse them in the future. I ended up using little wire staples to secure down the tabbing wire in between each cell. The staples were held into the foam with hot glue. These cells are insanely delicate, so I built this cover to protect them during storage and travel. We're choochin' everybody! It's raining outside, I just finished soldering all the solar cells together, and the plane is half, pretty much more than half, indoors, and it's already making 18.8 .8 volts. That's pretty good! This is my current electrical setup. It's really messy right now because I've just been testing things, but I'll clean it up later if it works. Basically, this wire here that you see coming out of the foam there is the solar power coming from the panels, but then it goes through this current sensor into the MPPT charge controller. It's the Genesun GV5, and then this does all its MPPT tracking, and then the power flows out of the battery port on the MPPT controller into this Y harness. And at that point, it either goes to the motor or to the battery, depending on which is pulling more power. If I'm flying at really high throttle and the motor is pulling more power, then the power will go to the motor. But if I'm not pulling any power with the motor, then it'll just go to the battery. These are the wires that are connected to the battery that goes on the nose of the plane. So if you don't know what an MPPT charge controller does, it basically adjusts the amount of power pulled from the solar panels to maximize their efficiency. Because if you pull too much power from the solar panels, their voltage will sag and then they'll give less power. So you have to keep the voltage from the solar cells at the right point to maximize their power. 
and that's what this does. Later, I'll take this out of the case and get rid of all these heavy connectors and make this thing a lot lighter. But for this first solar test flight, I'm just gonna leave everything as is. Now this little guy here is another form of MPPT controller that I should mention. It's called the Solar Bear, and I learned about this from RC groups. So this charge controller adjusts the rate at which the battery is charged to control where the maximum power point is. This thing takes the throttle input from your receiver here and adjusts the throttle signal that's going to the ESC to track the maximum power point. So let's say I wasn't even using a battery on this plane, I just plugged the solar cells directly into the motor. In that case, I would want to use this to use the throttle to control the maximum power point to get the most power out of the solar cells. It's definitely not ideal for a large plane like this where I need full throttle control with my throttle stick and I don't want something else controlling my throttle but for some super small solar planes that I've seen on the internet they use one of these to manage all that and with a super small plane you don't necessarily need full throttle control so it works out pretty well if you're interested in these search uh, solar bear MPPT controller on RC groups. It's a partly sunny day, but the weather's only going to get worse in the next 10 days or so, so we better take advantage of this and do a test flight. As it's sitting here in the sun, according to the current meter that's connected in between the solar cells and the charge controller, it's giving 4.2 amps, which is excellent. But then again, the one that's connected in between the battery and the motor is reading 3.7 amps and it's just sitting there, so <laughs> there's definitely something wrong with that current meter. There could be something electronically wrong with the whole current measuring system or the analog voltage measurement, I don't know. But from what I've found, the battery to current, which is the solar, the direct solar output, seems to be pretty accurate. The clouds are beautiful today. I would do better without them, but still nice. So we're in the air and flying autonomously, which is great. But unfortunately, a lot of the data we're getting back through the telemetry link is garbage. Ever since I inst- Okay, so I'm cutting myself off right there. I go on to explain what I thought was wrong, but I now realize that the power modules I was using are only rated for 4S, or 18 volts max, and the solar panel was outputting voltages in the mid to low 20s. So this could have screwed up one of the power modules or damaged the Pixhawk's ability to measure analog voltage. I also realized that the voltage readings are likely swapped, because if the 4S battery was actually getting up to 18.4 volts, it would probably blow up. So for that reason, I think this is the solar voltage pre-MPPT, and this is the the battery voltage. Now I also got the idea that the current sensing calculations could have been using the wrong reference voltages since they were swapped, but this seems unlikely because I think the current is converted to an analog voltage in the power module before it's sent to the Pixhawk. But there's definitely something wrong here. Maybe the PWM output from the MPPT controller is screwing up the power module somehow. This could happen if the current sensor is sampling at random points in the PWM duty cycle. I'm not sure. The sun is kind of going in and out of the clouds here, which isn't great, but it seems like our voltages are remaining pretty constant, which is an indication that this thing is flying on 100% solar power, so that's cool. Like I said before, this is all whack, so I shouldn't trust it at all, but from what I can see, it looks like it's working really well. Now, it has been suggested to just use one current meter that's right in front of the battery, so that if the battery is charging, the current will be negative, and then if the battery is giving power, the current will be positive. And I tried that, but RDU Pilot won't do negative battery currents, so that didn't work. Now if we assume this battery voltage measurement is correct, then it definitely looks like this plane is flying on 100% solar power. Because over the course of the hour-long flight, the voltage just bounces around between 15.8 and 16.7. The battery is full at 16.8 volts, so it never even got that low. This is pretty incredible considering that there was cloud cover for 40 to 50% of the flight. Thanks again to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. I buy a lot of solar plane parts online, and without a VPN, credit card information and personal data is wide open to hackers. So I use ExpressVPN to encrypt my internet connection and keep all my data safe. It's super easy to install and use. Turn on the service and secure your connection with just one click. ExpressVPN is consistently faster than other VPN providers, and they offer server locations in over 94 countries, giving you plenty of options to choose from. Get three months free with a one-year package. That's less than $7 per month, and they have a 30-day money-back guarantee. Visit expressvpn.com slash rctestflight to learn more. So it's been in the air for about an hour now. Oh, f Oh, f Oh, f Oh, f
Oh my God, it, oh, that was so bad. It just crashed. F Ugh. I'm such a fing idiot. I thought that I would just be able to set the minimum pitch angle to something really low, like 15 degrees, and then it would never dive fast enough for the control to get lost again. Holy shit, that rabbit was fast. But it was still on autopilot. I just manually lowered the altitude through mission planner, but it built up enough airspeed to lose control. I'm an idiot, I should have fixed that. This is a mess just blackberry needle bushes and oh god it's so tall i have to go way over to the other side ow f i definitely feel like the world's biggest idiot for not learning from my mistakes the first time it crashed these push rods and servos are just too weak and this is what i get so that absolutely sucks because putting all these solar cells on is a time consuming process and they're relatively expensive so i'm not happy but at the same time, this airframe is way simpler and took way less time to build than the solar plane V3. So I would much rather have this one crash than that one. It does look like it could be fixable if I just replace a lot of the solar cells and glue the foam back together. So I'll look at the little bit of data that I do have from the flight, see how it performed, and then make a decision on whether or not I should fix it up. So unfortunately, the Pixhawk didn't record a flight log for some reason, so we don't have detailed flight data but I did measure the battery voltage after I got the plane back, and it was basically full, which is incredible. This is even after it was sitting on the ground with the motor twitching and trying to spin for about 15 minutes while I was searching for the plane. I know for a fact that the solar cells were not charging the battery at the time the plane was sitting on the ground after the crash, because the solar circuit was broken here where one of the panels got completely ripped out. This is concrete evidence that the solar plane V4 was entirely successful, and I finally achieved the goal of the solar plane project after the last four years of trying. So that's super exciting. I think there are two main reasons why this plane worked better than the solar plane V3. First, the solar cells are not covered with film, which improves their performance. Second, it's lighter than the V3, but still has nearly as many solar cells. Despite having met the goal, the project doesn't end here. The next step is to fix this plane or build a completely new one with what I've learned, and then wait for next summer to come around and do some ultra long distance flights. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, bye.